Today, we are putting Earth through many different challenges to see if it can survive. We'll start by causing small floods and global warming on the planet, and eventually we're gonna work our way up to planetary collisions and the sun exploding and all sorts of stuff. This is all in the name of science to see what would happen to Earth if this happened in real life. So today is me versus the Earth, and we will see if Earth can survive. Okay, so here is Earth, the first, the first Earth of many today that we are going to either destroy or attempt to destroy. So for level one, we are gonna cause some global warming on the surface, just like make it worse than it is right now. And then also we'll see if that causes floods and if it doesn't, we'll cause our own floods. So we're just gonna go in here and change its atmosphere layers. We're just gonna give it a few more atmosphere layers. We'll put it at 10 atmosphere layers and that adds 204 Celsius to the planet just from greenhouse heating. And we will give it a few, a uh, few months it looks like and we'll see what happens here. Okay, so the average temperature on Earth is rising. Okay, okay. Uh, so it's been a few years. So this one's a slower approach to destroying the Earth, but look, all of the plants are dead. It is now just a barren planet with a lot of water still. I'm surprised the ice caps didn't melt and cause, oh, a lot of the ice is melted and cause floods. So we're gonna cause our own floods. I'm gonna launch an asteroid right here and we'll see if the shockwave is enough to cause flooding in California and this western part of North America. So here comes the asteroid. Boom, collision. Okay, so it sent out a giant shockwave and we'll see if... Oh, that did a lot of damage. It's like explosions everywhere. Okay, we're going to see if this causes any flooding. No, it doesn't look like it. It looks like the water shockwave dissipated already. So let's launch one a little closer. Okay, here it comes. This one's a lot closer. Okay, so you can see there's the collision and yes, look, the flood immediately starts taking over the western part of North America. All of California just got flooded from that. If they're not already dead from the global warming, they're definitely dead now from that shockwave. But it looks like Earth is mostly okay. Let's check its life likelihood. Its life likelihood is still at 85%. We probably killed a lot of the smaller life, but I think humans would have survived this. So let's go to level two. Brand new earth, uh, you can see the plants are back and the temperature is normal again. So for level two, we are going to move the moon closer to the earth to see if it can like cause the tides to be way more extreme. And we're also gonna throw some small asteroids at the planet. So here is the moon. You can see how far away the moon really is from the earth. So let's move it closer. Let's move it like really close without having it get destroyed. I'd say most people think the moon's like this far, honestly, which is not true at all. So let's see how bad the tides would be if the moon really was this far. Okay, the moon is in orbit now. So just the moon in orbit now. Let's see, okay, look, look how big the solar eclipses are on the planet. Let's see if this has any real effect on the tides or anything. Oh my gosh, it's so close that it's being ripped apart. The moon's being ripped apart because of the gravity because it's so close. So little chunk, oh, that's not a little chunk. South America just got impacted by a huge rock and it looks like it's gonna cause some flooding and it does look like the tides are working. So poor earth, oh, another one just hit Australia. It's chunks coming off the moon. So this would not be good. If the moon is really this close, it would get ripped apart. Okay, now we're gonna throw some more small asteroids at it just to see what that does. Okay, so you can see all these lines. These are all asteroids that are about to impact into the earth. Let's slow down time and we can watch all these. Oh, it looks like the moon is get going through another cycle of breaking apart and more rocks from that are gonna hit too. Okay, and then we have all these asteroids coming in hitting the ocean, but let's see what they do. Okay, so it's like a lot of little tiny, okay, those are not tiny. If that was real, the bomb explode, it'd be like a giant bomb went off all over the earth. More chunks are hitting from the moon and Africa's flooded. North America's missing half of its plants. South America's completely burned. And let's see what our life likelihood is at now. Look at that, it's like a burning earth. Life likelihood dropped to 63, but it is going back up. So that is good for earth. Okay, the moon's gonna break apart some more until it's kind of down to this little, tiny little rock that can't really break apart anymore and the earth seems to make a pretty good recovery after that yeah earth makes almost an, a full recovery in terms of how suitable it is for life but the actual surface of it you can tell is not the same as it was let's go to level three Okay, here we are again with the third Earth, and we're gonna do a similar thing by moving the moon closer, but instead of making it really close orbiting, we're gonna make the moon crash into the Earth. So we're gonna take a look at the orbit of it, and we're gonna just make it so the moon 
just randomly gets on a collision course with the earth so let's slow down time and we're gonna watch what would happen if the moon just randomly fell to earth okay here it comes this is pretty quick okay 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 here it comes so it's going so fast that the earth doesn't even have time to really break apart the moon because this is only at one minute every second you can see how fast the moon is really moving okay let's see what happens here First impact, there it goes. Okay, so it's starting this shock wave and these fragments from the moon and the earth are both getting thrown out. Okay, the moon gets completely absorbed by the earth, but let's see how the shock wave travels. So this is kind of like a giant tsunami that's traveling too. It's gonna get burned and then flooded and then burned again. Okay, all of the water it looks like, it's shooting out fragments from the back, just like the, the energy that it's creating. Oh, the entire planet is now molten. So this would most likely kill every single person. This is almost like a full reset for the Earth. If the Earth can come back after this, I will be surprised. Okay, we'll give it a few days now. So it's been like a couple of months since the moon collided with it. You can see it's almost like a dead planet now. There's no signs of life. Let's check its life likelihood. Okay, it's rising again. So I'm sure it dropped almost to zero or to zero during the collision and it's back up now. All the life probably died, but life could redevelop after something like that. So it looks like it's mostly a water world now. I wonder where all the water came from. Um, so I guess Earth did survive even if we didn't. <laughs> the Earth is still here. Let's go to level four. Here is Earth again. You may notice there are a lot of moons. Yes, there is, I think there's a total of 21 moons. So we're gonna see what happens if 21 moons crash into Earth, and we're also gonna throw one Mars at it to see if it can recover. So let's see what happens if all of these crash into Earth at the same time. Okay, so the moons are sort of in orbit, but you'll see right away they crash into each other and they're gonna start crashing into the Earth. Here's the Mars, it's gonna crash into more of the northern part of the Earth. We'll do a slow-mo on the Mars. Okay, there it goes. Mars is actually pretty sizable compared to Earth. Tons of fragments, so that's already going to be worse than our moon collision. You can see the moons in the background just colliding and growing. Okay, let's see if these collide with the Earth. Yeah, there goes one. There goes a couple. Oh no, poor Earth. Okay, so it looks like some of them might fly away and not collide. Yes, so it kind of got lucky with a few of these. But let's speed up time and see how Earth handles this. So the temperature got almost 2000 degrees Celsius. I'm honestly surprised how well it's recovering from these. It went down to about 30, but it's rising again. 30, 40, 50. It looks like it's stopping around 60. City lights came back though. That's kind of interesting. Okay, we need to do something that's definitely not gonna let Earth survive. And so let's go to level five. <laughs> Okay, here we go for level five. Instead of 20 moons, there are now 100 moons surrounding the Earth. But that is not all. We are also going to explode the sun. So let's start with that. Let's go over to the sun. We are gonna go tools, explode, and just click on the sun. Okay, so the sun is now in the process of exploding. So a supernova is on its way. Let's check on Earth, see what's happening here. So a couple of the moons have started to collide already. Let's speed up time and see what happens here. Oh, oh, there comes the supernova. Okay, okay. Oh, and there goes the moons crashing into Earth and the supernova is on its way. Okay, so the Earth is already nearly destroyed by all these moon collisions. Oh, it kind of has a moon. Oh, oh no, it just shrunk into nothing. It's a tiny little thing. How big is it? It is tiny now. The radius is only 28 meters and its life likelihood is at zero. It definitely... Every, all the life is dead. I don't even think Earth will survive this. Yep, there it goes. It completely disappeared. And now we're looking at Jupiter, which is also about to die. Okay, anyway, if you have more ways that you think I should try to destroy Earth, leave them down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.